Hello, YouTubers. This is another session with me and my dear friend, my dear brother, Josh McCall, continuing to build a, a decentralized social media platform for everybody around the world. You know, at the time where, you know, billionaires and millionaires are fighting to, you know, buy one platform or another, you know, I think it probably is a good idea to build our own and kind of, you know, if we're building something for our families and our friends and a place for us to communicate and know full well that nobody's going to be stealing our data. I think that's a worthy endeavor, Josh, don't you think? I do. Yeah. And you get to be whoever you are and say whatever you want, you know, and nobody kind of, you know, gives you a hard time or kicks you out of the network, you know, because of who you are and what you represent. And the last time, you know, so, so this is this is a great purpose. These are huge purposes, right? When you start, this is what I call an epic, right? This is an epic, you know, we're going and chasing this, you know, amazing goal. And we're trying to kind of, you know, truly build decentralized social media platforms. I'm really grateful for, you know, the amazing standard community, the Discord community. A lot of people from everywhere came in and they're contributing to this platform every day there is open poll requests around the clock like every time i go especially on the back end side of things like every time i go and take a look at you know the uh tarafu uh core api it's it's out there and it's uh is tarafu core always there's at least one or two open poll requests <clears throat> ready to take a look at they have comments very grateful for shri and the standard standard community who actually take these things very seriously and, and build, you know, removing groups, adding groups, all the good stuff that, you know, uh, that the community is contributing with. Okay, with that being said, you know, let's go back on the front end side of things, right? So <clears throat> last time you and I were in the process of, you know, starting to handle some exceptions, getting some validation exceptions, you and I talked a little bit about the transcendence of validation errors going all the way up from the API all the way up to the UI. What did you think about that? That's pretty cool, right? This is, you take full control into where to put these errors, how to shape them. What do you think about that, Joshua? Yeah, I was just thinking about it. It's been a little bit since we've recorded a session, but I was I've been I've been thinking about it how how it's actually going to change the 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 flow of getting the 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 uh, the errors through from the API to the front in a meaningful way, and then also the kind of almost a low code way too, and stuff because of the way we're wiring it up. If the API changes or or wants to convey a different meaning, then it's already wired up to the the front end. Uh, coincidentally, it seems it seems like whatever we're working on in my day job, we're also working on things too. So we we. Uh, we, coincidentally, my normal uh, job, we were we got done with a certain area, and the next feature or the next request was, "Hey, what about those error validations and stuff? And and how can we make them a little bit more clear?" I was like, "Well, have I got a thing for you?" So I think this ties in really well, and uh, maybe I can either teach my my team or maybe teach myself how to to handle these errors. So I are we is that what we're focusing on today? Is kind of diving a little bit more deeper on those validations and errors, or? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And remember last time, you know, I had the, the little discussion around, hey, there is this, uh, there are these ideas around, let me share my screen here real quick, Joshua, uh, this idea around um, an exception happening, right? So this is also another thing that just for the people to know where things at, I always say your unit tests, your unit tests is a documentation for your code. You want to know when was the last, what was the last thing you you and your friend were working on? Just go to the history and see what was the last thing we were doing. And that's exactly what would be it. We were basically saying should render validation details on post, right? So if I go into this guy in here, render validation details, this is post dialog render, should render validation details on post. So we basically went and said, oh, an error has happened go ahead and render that error, right? And I think the direction that we decided to go with Joshua is to basically go and say, here is my content validation summary. And we made that a fundamental part of your component. So if you look at the post dialogue, we must have added something in here called valid, there it is, validation summary base. And that's how we determined that we're gonna add this forward. In forms, this would be amazing because you can put these errors in one big dialogue or you want to put it, it's it's yours. You have full control over it. You don't have to play with forms or anything like that. And of course, we have a spinner. Just for our own sanity, you know, we're going to try to kind of just go out there and try things out. I think the exception that we tried to handle here is post view validation exception. I'm going to run this guy real quick. 
and then we're going to see what it does and then we're just going to go ahead and just make sure that things are still functional the way we expect them to so here is my uh, joshua here is my component and i'm going to leave this empty and i'm going to click post and here's an error that's happening key something whatever where does this come to let's see so 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 i see it i see a little error let's see what this error is because i think i remember us we said a couple of to do's for us before uh we did everything so this guy was saying hey this this guy doesn't have anything in it let's see here so in your in your uh, post view service we basically go and say give me validations and inside these validation we basically went and said here's a validation rule and there's the data inside that rule also okay so first of all i need to move this down because this this business rules engine should always be at the bottom always be at the bottom like that so that's one part and then uh, validate post view is not null that guy is done and also i want to go into the post view service here and i want to see what the error that's coming in so ideally you know it should throw a post view validation exception which is something that's coming from here invalid post view exception because because the value that i that i put in there is null empty or white space let me try this one more time i'm gonna go here i'm not gonna put anything in here it's gonna hit this guy post validation view exception invalid post and i'm gonna continue with this guy hit it if then let's see so on the component itself not this guy on the component itself it should land in here basically post view validation exception is that the case let me try this again so that's me just leaving the good thing also about being away for a while is that you're you're looking at your code as if you are that's okay so this guy is okay perfect so this guy is here let me run is it because i refreshed no there it is so look at this guy this guy is saying validation key data key and it has some information in there and what this guy say key cannot be null why does it think that the key is null that's a problem right either the key that was being passed in here it did not uh, render properly so let's go into the post view here. The key, uh, this guy, this guy right here. So we want this to be just a string, right? Because it's looking at content, but it should be name of whatever that mm. is, right? And we need to find a, a, a an, an error that, well, it's on the base side. We'll, we'll come back to this one. So now I, if I, I bet you, if I run this, code like this and I click post it should show something I see oh it's a it's a, there's a breakpoint breakpoint text is there you go okay <laughs> I'm gonna add something more to this I want this text is required to be in red Right, so it's 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 an indication that an issue has happened, and maybe you and I could think a little bit better about not having like a like a this crappy, uh, you know, uh, unordered list kind of old school kind of 1995 kind of HTML bible nonsense. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I'm changing my test, my friend. I'm gonna go here and say, let me just do this. Uh, code Rob, uh, fix order of methods. Let's go back here and I'm going to go into my test. Yeah, Joshua. And now my expectation is that this validation, I think this validation guy should be by default red. Is there, is there a situation that you can think of where we need to change the color of the validation summary? 
Well, I, I think there'd be different levels. Um, so I'm thinking like if you have a submission or whatnot and stuff, you might have different status and stuff. So if you, you might have a warning, you might have a uh, error. So like there's, there's things that are like, if you're going to submit information, you'll have a, a, the things that are required to have to be read. Like you can't, you know, do not pass go and stuff, but there's things that would be useful if you're going to submit and stuff. Like um, a warning. But maybe, yeah, so it's kind of like you know, if you're maybe if you're going to purchase something online, you have to have your your credit card information. It'd be nice to know where to ship it, and it would be really nice to know what your email is. So like your your billing information will be read, your shipping information will be you know amber or orange, whatever and stuff. Um, uh, but then your uh, you know the the um, phone number might be yellow and stuff. You could I suppose you could put it in different categories. Is that kind of what you're thinking, or is that kind of maybe a further on? Um, and another thought I was thinking, and maybe this is thinking too far uh, ahead, um, is that we, just like we have that, like the pretty, um, uh, uh, what again? What's your what's the the package name? The the pretty oh, the pretty laser. laser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the we we have like the conditions and the and the looping, um, but we we kind of run into this this scenario uh, quite a bit about having validation. Um, if we had the validation component, if we passed in our validation to the the, the pretty blazer, but then also told it how uh, we wanted to display. Do we want to put it in an uh, unordered list? Do we want to have it as toast? Do we want? To have, but let me you know. Let's put a pin in that. I don't know if that's something we get to discuss, but like the yeah. um that that'd be kind of like useful lifecycle and patterns to like you know, to. Uh, include in, in each project and stuff but yeah for right now i think um if you're going to show a validation or whatnot it, i think it'd be good to default it as the most severe and then let someone choose to back it down so that if we're not if someone's marketing it as required we're not like just showing it as a yellow message and then someone uh, you know disregards it and stuff so make okay. it the most most visual okay i can do that so basically we just want to pass a color in here this parameter parameter prop string uh, color like that and that color will be whatever you want to pass in there and that color will mark basically style color and then that would be color so now we're mandating that the input parameter has to be red right yep. So I'm gonna go here and say, well, wait a second. Oh, speaking, you, you talked about Pretty Blazor. Did you know someone took that idea and went and built another library, exactly like Pretty Blazor? Did I tell you about that part? No, I haven't, I haven't heard this drama. Spill the tea. Yeah, check, check this out. Someone, someone posted that on um, Twitter the other day. Even their comment was hilarious. They basically said. Oh, so you mean like Hassan's library? And I laughed so hard. I was like, wait a second, what is that? Let me show you. Um, <laughs> You've got the neighborhood watch on Twitter. What's that about? Yeah, I swear to God, man. I, you know, it's the guy that commented on that was he's actually he's actually a very good guy. He's the guy that owns Wiremock. You know, this guy. There it is. So, <laughs> so check this out. This guy said, "Oh, look, control flow for Blazor, right? You go and say for each if condition if then. Do you see this this code here? Yeah." Control flow. And then this guy was like, ah, yes, this solution reminds me of Pretty Blazer by Asa. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm looking at the library here. This is exactly this is exactly what the library is doing. That's pretty much Pretty Blazer. The one thing that I was that I wanted to tell Steph is that, you know, this is actually not exactly like mine because mine is test driven. So that's mm. that's a little difference there, you know. If you're gonna use throwing the shade, throwing shade. Uh, <laughs> now, now, did did he not see um, your project by chance and then create no, no, his own he, thing? No, or? no, no. This guy knows Brady Blazer. He knows it. Oh, very okay, well. okay. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, if if by chance, give him credit of the doubt and so, or, no, know, no, 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 no. That that guy knows Brady Blazer very, very well. You know. Okay. Um. You know the the thing is what i always tell people don't worry when people steal your idea worry when they stop because that means yeah when they don't yeah yeah because that means you're running out of things that are someone decided yeah. to put some time out of their life knowing that if you're gonna go on twitter and talk about blazer i mean we've been early adapters of blazer since the beginning josh 2019 2018 yeah. so 
if someone well, it, it would be good either, either way because if he if maybe he made a better pretty blazer and you could say okay I wash my hands of it I go on to do something else and stuff yep. but then if he if he if it's not then you'd be like ah I, I think ours is better so you know yep. you're either that's... you're either the trendsetter or you're the trendsetter in a different direction and stuff so <laughs> no I think I think that's great is uh um if that's, you that, that's what Eagle Hansen always says he's like you know you know there is the honeymoon phase when you create a library but then if someone wants to put it out there and you know, maintain it and take care of it by all means, man. Go ahead and be happy. <laughs> Maybe we should offer to, uh, you know, let them fork the the project and take it over. You're like, hey, since it looks so similar, do you want to? Here's to, this one has tests. Would you like it? No. I, okay, that's a little. I I I I think it's okay. I th I think I think when people uh, try to mimic you, that's a you know biggest form of flattery. Is that what you what they say? Something like that. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm actually genuinely happy. Like I came up with an idea that made someone out there say, "Oh, I need to make one like it." You know, mm -hmm. genuinely. You know. So anyway, I I Steph, if you're watching, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the feedback. Let people do whatever they want. Thank you, brother. This is this is greatly appreciated. There's also something that Eagle Hansen um told me about. He went out there. This guy. How much I love this guy. He went out there and he uh he built a a dotnet benchmark library specifically for blazer you know I, I saw his message on discord the other day um uh his message on this guy's like i saw him check out this library i was like okay i'll take a look at it so i thought i'd bring it up since we're talking about blazer know what i mean yeah, no, we we go off and and tinge, but I, I want to see the I want to see the benchmark on Blazor, and then I also want to see how how does it, it does it have benchmarking for the integration with Maui? I have not played with Maui yet, but Maui and Blazor integration is something about like, Maui. Yeah. Josh, ideally, if we're building a social media platform, it has to be a mobile app. Mm -hmm. It has to be. The trick here is to take all that stuff that we're doing here and run it on the mobile app. We'll see what the Sync Fusion folks think. Well, I think we should skip uh, the the mobile and just go to the uh, Cyberlink. <laughs> What's Cyberlink? Isn't isn't that the uh, the brain chip by by Elon? What's the uh, <laughs> what, what... Neuralink? Neuralink. Dang it! It's too late. It's not enough caffeine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me let me write a test here. <clears throat> Let's see. So render uh, okay. So so I want so in here now the 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 calculation is different because I'm basically saying on post component it's not enough that the validation data should be that I also want this this dot post dialog rendered component dot instance dot uh, a, a content validation summary dot Let's see, what is this guy there? That's a validation summary base. It's just not able to dot, dot, dot color. There you go. There Show you go. it. Oh, did you see that? Look at the UI. Look at the UI. Yeah. No, that's... no you didn't see the part where it did. Like, look, look, it look. It said red. No, it said red. Did, did you see the one where it did red, like, as a string? Uh-huh. There, there it is. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> got a little creepy. Just saying. Okay, so let's run these tests and see what happens. Microsoft got their uh, their code intelligence from Amazon, didn't they? They've been listening. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you, Josh. <laughs> Just saying. So okay, so what's there? There has to make sense, right? The error here says I expected it to be red. But I got null, which is exactly what I expected to be. So here is a copy. Here is an error. Fail. Go for it. All right. Oh, let's go to town. There we go. I think it, I think it went. Run the test. Is it your turn? Yep. Are you sharing my screen? I'm sharing my screen. Are you sharing my screen? Am I sharing your screen? Yes, you I got, am. You got you got all the buttons. You got the power. I got the power. Tick, 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 tick. By the way, because because you uh, have been, we've been doing you the streamyard things. Loved me. <laughs> I've been playing around streamyard. It's it's pretty sweet. Like it, it feels like you're, you know, it replaces a whole bunch of stuff. And and I, uh, 
yeah, I, I learned about StreamYard from the Channel 9 folks. Like, every time I go do OData session with them and something like that, you know, they have to go on StreamYard. So I'm like, okay, let's go StreamYard. If that's what the cool kids are using these days. Pretty cool. What are you, what are you StreamYarding about? Uh, just, I mean, have you ever had graphic um, novels and toys? And uh, I don't want to talk about it. No. Um... Okay. Right. <laughs> um okay i i uh w was this gonna be a string right it's just uh it was just a, the uh no it's gonna be color no it's gonna be color wrong what, what you're doing it? is what you're doing is wrong what was it remove 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 all that remove. nonsense that you just added room remove 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 it all remove it remove the empty line as well oh geez okay Go to the component. Go to the component. All right. Uh, and then just in the summary component, just type red like a man. <laughs> what happened to you? Are you are you experiencing a brain fart? What happened? Huh? You have to, it's a, uh, oh, because you already put that, okay, so you want to put that in color. Did they have the, what, what? Let me, color? let me, see. because you already have the, ah, uh, see, so usually you delete the, the, okay, oh, C-O-L, how do you spell color? O-U-R equals, double quotes, red. All right. Hey, look at you. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> middle, middle, middle management potential written all over you. What is that thing that you always say? That's that's a straight shooter with upper management. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for for people watching, it's after midnight for Joshua, so he's done for the day. He's super done for the day. Yeah. And yet, and yet, sometime some somehow he decides to hang out with me, which I'm very grateful for. Now, run the whole thing. Let's see it go red. Just be just to be made fun of on online. Um, so I don't have the back end running. Um, it's okay. You don't need to because it will catch it on the client side validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. And I probably need to share like actual things. Why you got to out me like that? I'm trying to eat. Come on, man. <laughs> right in front of my whatever that is. Window. Window. Truffle. Truffle. Okay. And then we will we'll uh, type it in post. Text is required. Wonderful. It works. Make a commit. Grammarly is even telling me I should uh, I should fix my my uh, required text. Um, the commit is already there, and then it, I already sent it out. We need to write the next test. Handle um, post view dependency validation exception. Okay. Hey Josh. Yes. I love you. Brother. Oh, thanks. Someone asked me okay. the other day. Someone asked uh -oh. me the other day on my team. They were like, You're calling that guy in the video brother. Is he your brother? <laughs> Do we look like brothers? No. No, no, it was another guy, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I call did, everyone did brother. You look like him, brother. Um, okay. <laughs> So we want to do dependency validation, right? Yeah, pretty much the same as the one that we did, except yep. that, the, that the exception is, is different. Like, you know, you have this exception. So you probably want a theory, Josh. Instead of copying the same test, you need a theory. Well, yeah, so I'm looking at so this. So we, we did a validation, in it, but it has this, just the normal uh, name. Uh, we probably want to put uh, validation in the in the name, right? So we um, don't you split it out into different files, or or is that? This is not validation. It's just exception handling. Oh, okay, okay, I'll catch it. Um, and then, so let me find a um, uh, a example of the theory. Here you want me to write a test for you? Sure, let's do that. And just uh, okay. Let me write the test. This Let time. the caffeine kick in a little more. Okay. What caffeine? You didn't you didn't drink coffee, did you? Oh, we got the Mountain Dew Zero. 
zero calories, lots of caffeine. Okay. Okay, I'll give you a failing test. So what I want to do <clears throat> here is that I want to basically go and say, let's run all these tests just to make sure I, I received your passing test. Joshy, Joshy. Okay, here we go. And then exceptions, uh, should throw validation detail, and there's all that stuff. So the difference here is that, that this type of exception could come from different places. So I'm going to go here and say theory. Right, and in here I say uh, member data name of and uh, validation exceptions, validation exceptions like this. And we have um, uh, we have a validation exception that comes out of the post view service, and we have dependency validation, so it's a dependency validation exception, dependency validation exceptions. And out here, my friend, I want to basically go and say. <clears throat> uh public static theory data uh dependency validation exceptions <clears throat> right and however we created that guy no theory data with exception in it um whatever however we created that guy we need to create it excuse me in here so there's random error message, returned error message, and then everything leads up to this guy, which is invalid post view exception. <clears throat> so I basically want all of this, basically. And that's what's gonna come from the other side. Some content is something we don't care about. We'll keep that as is, but everything else comes with us. Okay, <clears throat> let's go up here. Here's the stuff that we want. <clears throat> An invalid post view exception with some stuff in it. There you go. And instead of this guy, now we're creating two of these. So there's this one guy here. There's one exception here with invalid view exception. And also there is new post view dependency validation exception within valid post view exception. So now there's these are the two cases that can come out of uh, that particular uh, ex, uh, that particular service, which is the post view service, right? That covers mm -hmm. everything because we're at this, at this, but there's there's a couple of others that we need to take care of. So, okay, so this is exception, uh, post view validation exception. Okay, so there's this guy, here we go. Are we still over? 104 that's fine post view validation exception everything else should be fine except for the inner exception of this guy which is okay because i can go here and say <clears throat> take that down by one post view validation exception dot inner exception dot data i should fix that problem so now one of these tests is going to pass and the other is going to fail because we're handling one but not the other so let's see if that's the case. And then you're going to make it pass, Joshua, right? Yep. Is that what you're going to do for real? Okay. Hopefully. Let's go to town. Okay. So one passed, one failed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of your turn to fix it, right? Here. Fail. Go to town. All right. Upstairs, downstairs, all al all around town stairs. What? Why did you laugh right now at my? I just I, wait. I never know if you if you are singing real songs or fake songs or Hassan songs it's, or they it's, it's, it's not a song at all. It's just a funny thing I saw. There you go. So funny. <laughs> Do you remember that, Josh? Yeah. Hmm. We're, we you are. Say, uh, you should say that to Ella and see what she, how she behaves. Yeah. Funny. We we're gonna get and put a fence in the backyard and uh, and so obviously uh, part of getting a fence was we had to we had to get a digger, so a digger. <laughs> dig 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 dig. <laughs> okay, Joshua, you have okay. a failure. Why, why are we? Why are we? Uh, That's just uh, your Visual Studio, you know, because you haven't updated it in three years. Yeah, whoa, whoa. 
So you're suffering. Whoa. You're you're suffering joshiness. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. A case of joshiness. Uh, excuse me. This is preview 2022. This is. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Well, anyway. Okay. Let's go, Yeshua. Okay, so in our in our uh, in our uh, component here, oh, this is not our component. So that we want to go to our component. So we'll go to post dialog. Uh -huh. uh, go into implementation. Okay, so in here we want to handle our uh, a try catch. Uh, so we're we're catching our post view uh, exception, um, but we also want to catch our um, validation uh, dependency validation exception. That's right. So we want to come down here and um, post view uh, dependency. Yeah, depend depend and okay. Um, but D e, dependency D, D E. E -E. See, what? see, people, their programming will teach you patience. Do control minus. That works too. And then, and then see. There you go. Ah. Okay. So, are we going to do anything differently? Um, we nope. obviously don't want to put that in a that method, way. probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So then we will let's do this guy and then do. Um, why isn't there you go extract method and then uh do we always render, render render validation error render validation error uh, so we'll bring this guy down because it's and instead of this guy being like this on, just with exception with the x the exception with the what that oh okay gotcha okay, we just want to be uh oh. exception the x with the x and then call the variable exception like a normal exception is it uh control shift control alt shift arrow we'll take one we word did, we'll, we'll do uh, oh really How, what, what control alt it's control alt shift arrow will will highlight one word at a time oh well okay All right where is so control alt shift Arrow. No, didn't do it. Arrow left or right? I, I tried. I tried. Okay, Josh. Okay. You're, you're... That's what I... Okay. So, and we just want it to be exception, right? Yeah. I'm still looking forward to using uh, Visual yep. Studio more. I've been in Visual Studio code land, and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it. Um, okay. Yeah, just use the same method up there. Yep. Well, the variable name is going to change a little bit, right? Yes. Nope. In here is fine. In the bottom one, it will. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you spell it again? Dependency. Okay. I kid. I kid. Uh -huh. A little bit. Uh -huh. okay. Now let's go take, ahead. Take line and... sixty-five. Take line sixty-five. Son, take line sixty-five. Where do you want to take it? <laughs> If you just work, <laughs> as you talk. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so then we come back to our test here, and then it says, "Okay." Correct. All right. So the next step is that we want to react to non-validation exceptions. Right, and non-validation exceptions is basically things that happened on our side that the end user can't do anything about, right? Sometimes it depends on the component and what system you're trying to build and maybe some you know, uh, uh, features that you wanna enable to allow engineers to see the actual exception versus showing, just seeing a message. You know, when you're, when you're playing on Xbox and it says, you're in developer mode you can view more details about the error versus just a customer who's seeing just the top line of the error message we want to do the same thing in some sophisticated systems people have a a code error codes you know for the system that they're building and you go to the reference and look at these error codes and understand what they mean 
Uh, in our case here, this is irrelevant because we're building a social media platform, not a, you know, some turbo machinery, you know, like our end users are not engineers, so we can't give them error messages. So here's what we can do, my friend. Uh, we need to write a test that looks somewhat like this one, except, <coughs> except that our validation summary is going to render a message instead of iterating over multiple, uh, actually, let me roll back. You pushed that code that you just pushed, right? No, you didn't sync yep. up. Yet. Sync, sync that code up. Button, button. Let me ask you this question. We want our validation summary to maybe have a flat statement versus having a list of errors that target particular fields. Mm -hmm. So that means our base component needs a new parameter and that new parameter will basically help us go and say, you know, I need to be able to just render a flat statement instead of going and saying the name is invalid or, you know, the ID is invalid or whatever the case may be. Right. So we need a different layer of validation summary, something that goes and says, here's a message. So I'm going to take your screen for a second, Joshua, here, just to kind of render this idea, because that stuff I'm going to show to people like this is the I can't have you be there. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> just to sing with you. OK, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah, yes, you are. OK, brother. So 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 OK, so. OK. What I want to do here is that I want to kind of evolve our validation summary a little bit where we can go and say, OK, this validation summary can also have just one flat statement that it needs to print out. Right. And that flat statement requires us to add a new parameter in here. And this parameter will be just a message. And this is mes this message is what we're trying to propagate. Right. And this message here will be something that it's outside of the conditional. It's just the message itself. So we're basically going and saying, I don't know, label uh, message. And we already said style uh, color uh, color. Whatever the color that we're passing in, that will be the color. And this is the message. Now, my test is going to be something to the effect of when a non validation exception happens, we really don't care about the iterations over whatever I want to just render the message that's coming out of the exception itself. How are we going to do that? Right. Uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to write a test in here. Quick test. This test is going to do something somewhat similar. The only difference here is that it's going to cover two other exceptions that are coming, which are not validation exceptions anymore. They're going to be dependency exceptions. So this is dependency exceptions in here. I'm going to go and say want public static uh, theory data. And of course, the AI is trying to be too smart. And you need, we need dependency. But Josh, dependency, D E N C Y. Exceptions. <laughs> I was going with the European spelling. <laughs> Should introduce you to this guy, Paul Wardy and Ash, Ashley. They're, they're British people and they say funny things. <laughs> <laughs> All the like time. Americans can spell. Is that what they want? What they say? <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, uh, dependency exceptions. I just want. I just want a message on this thing. I don't really care, like what is going in. And just As a side note. I really like reading through my like coworkers like you know uh, code and everything, and I love when things are misspelled because you know sometimes it's like misspelled like inconsistently, so like you have the different thing whatever and stuff. But it's almost like you're reading a story, and then you're like, hmm, that's a kind of a fun way to say that and stuff. It, it takes it all. It, you you can get people's personality like reading you know uh, different people's code and everything, and then then I, I find someone who really can't misspell, and I was like, ah, another one like me. I I you know I like this guy. <laughs> That guy, that guy is the guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Exception. Okay, there you go. So it's just a bunch of exceptions. We don't even need the message anymore because we're not going to propagate the actual inner issues. Just the outer, you know, don't, don't, don't kind of, you know, put our dirty laundry out there. Should render dependency. 
error details on post async. And the exception is coming from here. And here is a post instead of validation post dependency. And that guy, yeah, Joshua, is supposed to have, there will be no validation data. So this guy should be, should be null basically. But the other, this guy should be red, that's correct. And also this guy, which is gonna be not the content validation summary, this is gonna be the message. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Message should be, should be, and that will be the post view dependent. Oh my God, oh my God, what is this thing? Either our standard is easy to understand for the machine. So machine is like, yeah, that's easy dog i can figure this out or something really creepy is going on being targeted josh gonna be happy <laughs> not gonna have any jobs i'm gonna have any job so what what did i just do i basically went and said oh this this guy is okay dependency exceptions right we need these guys here we run this it should still fail but it'll fail for a lot a, a completely different reason mm -hmm. okay so this guy here is saying I expected, you know, uh, this error to happen, but I found null. This is exactly mm -hmm. what I expected. Let's do that. Let's go here and let's say, here's the new one. Go to town. That will be the last task in this, by the way, just FYI. And then we're going to play, we're going to play around with it a little bit and, and make sure that it works. Now it's your side, my friend. Yay. Yep. Okay. Can you believe it? We created a dialogue. It took us only like a month. <laughs> maybe maybe even a little bit more than a month. You know, the timing on this, uh, this is my one-liner joke before. I'm going to tell you I have a joke, so that would be pre prepared to laugh. Um, so we, uh, we're we going to have our social media is going to launch about the same time Elon figures out how to buy Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think his new uh, thing. Is, well, the Twitter folks are saying you can't back up on that deal now because that's forty-four billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's forty-four thousand millions. Forty-four thousand millions. That's forty-four billion. Um, I think he's saying that a lot of users on Twitter are bots. And not Ooh. Real. And there's actually a website that shows you that whether your followers are organic real or are they bots i think that's pretty mm. cool i, mean, I checked I have two followers so i can i can i can verify that you so. don't have two followers what's the what's the why is this not click it into the thing well we need to update you, have, you, to have, you have to be able to use code first <laughs> dang it let's go yeah yeah sure I really like our hangouts. Oh, we chat, write code. We get to make fun of you. You get to make Figure fun out of how yourself. Visual Studio works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joshi. Oh. Hey, that's a good failure right there. Yeah, but it's not going to the thing. Why okay, it's not right opening? Here. I don't know. Uh, we have our dependency validations, and then we have our dependency here. Um, and then we want to go ahead and back to our, let's go just open it up into the uh, the web project. We'll go into our components, our views, components, post, this guy. But the other guy, that's this guy. OK. Um, so then we have our try catch, and then we want to make another one that is, we'll, we'll catch this, but do something different. Um, so don't yell at me just yet. Um, so we will, uh, we want to do post view a dependency exception. Um, then uh, we, so we have our post view dependency exception. So this is our post view and dependency, and then we'll say control R. Um, It's just, it's just revolting on me right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so, and, but so instead of, of that Mountain Dew in it. 
<laughs> yeah, just throw it at it. Take this. Oh, okay, render validation. So we're gonna actually do something different, right? And stuff because we want to. Um, is this is uh, we're. So the only difference here is instead of this dot exception, you're assigning it to an error message, and everything yeah. else just goes under the the wraps because there's no. Um, you may still assign the exception, but we're not gonna iterate over anything because it's it's not gonna have any data. And right. so do we want to have a the, the different method? Do we want to have... render yeah, dependence okay. here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Honor the chronological order of implementation. In fact, actually, you should push both of these private methods to the bottom because okay. public goes before private. Uh, and then we say we want the uh, this dot message. Uh -huh. the message. Oh, it's because of the content validation deal. Yep. So create a new mm. a new property. Call it error message. Yep. 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 Look. Right. String error message. Yeah. Yep. So that. Okay. This uh, error message. And instead of instead of looking at the inner exception, just assign the exception to the exception. Yes. Okay. Now, what do we do now? So there's so we're two, to... there's What's two that? of these exceptions that you're supposed to handle. Let's go back to the test real quick. Yep. Okay. Go to go, go to dependent dependency exceptions. Yep. Oh, did I forget to rename those? Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, instead of post view validation, call it dependency, and the one below it, call it service exception. Dude, go back. Nope, go back. What, 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 what? what? Go back. Okay, stand where you are. Don't change anything. Do Alt, Control, Shift, Left. Alt, Control, Shift, Left. Nope, doesn't do it. Why? <laughs> I think I don't know. I think it's just uh, I, am, I, I didn't help. What are you trying to do? It takes only one word. It selects one word in a big statement. Okay. Anyway, just just do your thing. <laughs> I'm I'm, um, I'm I'm out of here. I'm not about this life. <laughs> so, well, you're changing the good stuff, though. Oh no, we're changing the good stuff. You're gonna have to go old school. So post view dependency exception and post view service exception. Dependency exception and then post view service, uh, service exception. Service exception. Okay. So then I come back over to our network uh, here and we want to uh, catch this guy. And we're going to say service. Okay. So now. Uh, to fix, the, fix the exception name. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. There's still more. Something else is missing, right? You need to tell There's... your summary about the message, right? Yes. I'll let you figure it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's called message. It's just your Visual Studio going crazy. <laughs> Why Visual Studio? Okay. Yep. Now run your world. Okay. Let's run the world.
Josh, I want to get of the get rid of that funk that I have at the top. The funk. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll get to that part later. So this guy is saying expected post dialogue rendered component dot instance what? Uh, by the way, you can make it wrap. You can make your message wrap. I don't remember where the option is, but uh, anyway, uh, kind of text. Some... Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Uh, expected. Uh, where is it? Um, uh, uh, yeah, post validation data to be null but found empty. Oh, okay. Just change it to empty then. Do you see the data scroll down? Just just call the the one that says null line one thirteen. Just say be empty. Be empty. It's not letting you. What no. what happens when you hover over uh, validation data? It's an I dictionary, and uh, and fluent assertion doesn't understand that. Stupid. Um, <laughs> is there is there. Mm, how do we do that? Uh, we need an empty dictionary, right? But we can't, the type has to be, uh, spin up uh, spin up Google real quick, Joshua. Let's see, how do, how do we create an empty dictionary? Is there, uh, actually, there, actually, yeah. actually, there's a way to do it. Go to validation data, like actually just, you know, go into the definition of validation data. Okay. Go into this guy. How do we initialize this guy to make it? Um, the problem is it's it's not this guy that is. <laughs> uh, go, go back to your exception. Go back mm -hmm. to your your test. Mm -hmm. And just type B new dictionary. Ooh. Is that a uh, B new? Yes. J no, j no, just B and then inside of it type new dictionary. New. Uh, dictionary. Yeah, is it just the, the but yep. Uh, yep, dictionary. Control period. And then maybe we're going to need to, you need to give it like a string and object as generic parameters. Ah, uh, gotcha. String object. Uh huh. And then what else? Yeah, Joshua, just run it. Let's see what it says. Somehow we might need to map it to iDictionary or something like that, but we'll see. <laughs> it's saying... Um, but empty, but found empty. <laughs> Is that because it's a different reference or whatnot? <laughs> Can you please copy that for my Twitter feed? That's the good stuff. Um, yeah, well, here you screen you screenshot it. Um, okay, I okay. I, I, here, I yeah. have I have it on the video actually. So just just do a just just cast it into i dictionary. That's all. Okay. Like so this, then if we... this, yeah, just cast it into i dictionary. Uh, is it as or is it? Um... Try with as. It sounds it sounds fancier, but yeah, and don't put any parameters there. Just say, oh, it's not letting you. And just cast it into a dictionary, which is just uh, put it in parentheses in front of it, right? That's that's what casting is, I think. How long have you been doing this? Ten years now. Grow up. Come on, man. I, I do a different language every single day. Oh, oh. what happened? Can't here? spell any of them, but uh, I do a different language. So we want this to be i dictionary, I guess. Do do string object for this one as well, Joshua. Okay. String object. Okay. Does it like it? It kind of likes it a little bit. It's not try, complaining. Try to run it. it. It's saying it's unnecessary, but uh, I don't think I, I think it is. And and instead of B, just make it B equivalent. Okay. B. Yep. Run again. Two. Because B is referential. Mm -hmm. This should pass. Uh, 
Uh, maybe take I dictionary, Josh. Hmm. Sorry. Still doesn't like it. Just take I dictionary. What do you mean? I take it. I like take it out. Just remove it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's run again. I thought it came back with an array of. Is it array of objects or an array of strings? Try try instead of an object. Try a string array. Okay. It's also giving you a funny error. It's saying a key value pairs that is t keyed to Ooh, type. Different. Keyed to type implements. Why it's not giving you be empty though? That's so stupid. Um, we, we just want to say this validation data will be empty. Try this validation data dot count is zero. Mm -hmm. Dot B or, or uh, count. Uh, what what options do you have there? Uh, oh, should. oh, should oh yeah. should should B. Is there B zero? No, like B zero, just one word. Uh, B. Oh, come on. Just type B and put zero inside of it. Ah. Yep, semicolon, take all of that out, run. Because this is not a validation exception. So we expect the validation data to be. Hey, there you go. Now just run it end to end and put all the right information in your post. But because you're not running the API, you should give us that error nicely. So let's try it out. You have your web page shared. I can, I can, we can share. Share, share and care. Oh, I can I can share multiple things. This thing's sweet. No, you can't. No, oh, no, I can't. It's not sweet. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the right things. Okay. Yep. Click post because you don't have the API running. It should give us. So now Blazor is trying to connect to the API. There you go. Oh, post of it. Nice. Yeah. And our new standard is that um, our new standard is that we don't even talk about the layer. So this word view is not going to be there anymore. Do me a favor and go to the post view. Um, don't worry about that now. But anyway, that's the error, right? You got that error. That wraps up this uh, this task, my friend. We can actually now merge that PR and we'll be actually, yeah, you, you made it to the other side. You know, it, it took us a little bit of work and effort, but it, it works. Huh? Did you push it? Yep. It's, 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 it's gone. It's, it's, it's out there for the That's world to see. Okay. Did you, did you uh, do a Giphy? Can you do a quick Giphy for the PR? Yeah, we can do that. Just to show people. Okay, so I'm just looking at the PR here real quick, Josh, while you're putting the Giphy. Just for people watching, Giphy is just you running the UI, you know, end to end, and basically going and saying, here's here's why this UI is working. Okay, so. So, okay. False dialogue. So now this guy is not... This guy's not draft anymore, finally, which is great. What is this that I'm seeing here? Hassan Habib and Josh McCall. Wow, that's from March 25th. It's a while. Uh, watching 
the episode you were discussing the next piece of code yeah i saw this invoke async i want to share an opinion to know what do you think about next arg argumentation what's an argumentation i think invoke async is redundant from the moment the method set value was transformed into async at first time invoke async uh, was added when the method was synchronous in order to allow value change. So invoke async tries to marshal to the loop thread. But then if method is asynchronous, the compiler detects that there is an awaitable call value change invoke async inside the method. So it creates the inner state machine to deal with task value task from a single thread or fork to another thread if needed. So the first awaitable call won't return the control to the next line until set value task is completely resolved. That ends with the next simplification. This dot value await. So he's basically saying instead of encapsulating it like this, you can just say set value equal value await this dot value change it. We tried that, buddy. We tried that and it didn't work. You know, I thought that what's his name? Lab uh, Raul. We tried that, Raul. It didn't work out. Okay, Raul has my internal mock library too. Raul is a great guy then. Okay, so Raul, we tried that. It didn't work out, unfortunately. Okay, Joshua, do you have a Giphy? Yeah, I have a screenshot. You didn't do a? Did you didn't do a Giphy? Okay. My, it it didn't it didn't it, we're working on it. Hey Josh, check this out. Fail, pass, fail, pass. It's 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 true to the values. Look look at. Fail, pass, fail, pass. This is pass, but it's failing. Fail, pass, pass, fail. Nice. There you go. That's a great thing to show people for to show people how pair programming works. Do you think? I like it. I mean, in all honesty, like we are more about explaining how we're doing what we're doing. So that normally takes a little bit more work, right? Than just just streaming through, you know. Yeah, if we weren't providing all the entertainment, obviously it would it would go a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you made it. It's pretty cool. The one thing I need I need kind of uh, your thoughts about. I want to get rid of this. Do you see that part here? Um, I don't want this. Yeah. I just want the coal itself to be here, and that's it. Uh, do it one more time. What, what you don't want? What? Do you see this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an honest function. Yep, yep. I want to get rid of it. See if I can simplify our code even better to make it a little bit more. Um, I, I also have a couple of things to change in that PR. So let me just go back here real quick, Josh. Let's see. This is the portal. Let me pull latest here. Just a couple of cleanup or refactoring things. To make sure that this is. I've been in TypeScript land, um, but is it silly to say you can like? Can you just me use the the method name um, to to call it? Like instead of having the the anonymous function, then and then calling the method, you could just use the name of the method, which is a reference to the uh, the method. Let's try it, Joshua. So let me just run a quick cleanup here. Run code cleanup that will fix everything. There you go. And then um, on on the component, the post dialog. So even because this call is not awaited. Yeah, I know it's not awaited. So is it complaining because, yeah, see, what if I did just that? That worked. That would make me really happy. Because, it's a, because this guy is returning a value task. That's why it's freaking out, right? If it wasn't returning a value task, it wouldn't be freaking out that much, right? Which makes mm, me because you're you're kind of hiding the value task part of it and stuff, and um. So, so hang on. What if I did this? There's another solution for it, which is like me going in here and saying, "Hey, take away that value task and make it void," which is horrible, you know, because it will solve the problem here, but it's crappy programming. Look, it solves the problem <laughs> immediately. So the reason for that is if you go into the dialog, the dialog base, let's go to the dialog base real quick. We're pa I think we're passing an action. Let's go into dialog base in here. 
what are we passing for this click action? Right? One thing I learned from Brian Parker, which was, he said, why don't you just pass a delegate? And you get to determine what that delegate is. Right? The only problem with that is that the delegate might be, I don't know, let's try it. So this is delegate uh, value task, value task, um, yeah, something like that. Delegate, uh, private delegate, and then value task. How did we do this? Um, we define these, de yeah, it's just like that, right? And then the only thing is that this guy needs to be an actual delegate which would make it like this. But now this guy can't be a parameter anymore, right? How did he do that? He, d he did something super cool. He basically passed in delegates as parameters into your Blazor component, right? I, I need to go see what he did, but he basically, his idea is basically to go and say, hey, instead of, it, I wonder if he had to initialize it with something. That would be, that wouldn't be cool. Let me try, let me try it this way. Uh, does this action, that he, the action that he has in here, does this action take in, I remember actions can tell you you can return something, right? Not the actions, the, um, uh, the, the, the event callback, right? Let me see here in Blazor. Let's go back here because because that would make things a lot cleaner. I mean, we have a solution, but yeah, if you have a parameter of uh, event callback, um... uh huh, parameter uh, Blazor component. Let's... Yeah, it it won't let me. Uh... Yeah, he did something. He's, he's, a, he's a very smart guy, you know. He did something to allow delegates to be passed back and forth between the components, which I like a lot because that basically means you can literally do whatever you want there. Like you can basically go and say, you know, whatever that delegate may be and whatever its return type is, I'm handing this over to you and you deal with it, right? So it's not an action. It's it's nothing like that. It's its own thing, right? I think... Mm, did he hmm, did he assign it what did you do brian parker to make it work this way on click callback invoke a sync uh let's see what was this project that we were working on together it's called um dynamic components the dynamic Blazor book, Blazor Cosmos, Blazor Fabric, uh, Enumeration, Pretty Blazor, Dynamic Components and Blazor. Yeah, I don't remember, honestly, but uh, he, he has a solution for it, basically. The idea is, you know, you're, you're passing a delegate. I think you can do that if you are accessing the function directly which is a little bit weird. Like imagine this, like if you can go and do this, you can go and say, I want to assign, you know, this delegate directly into my function. So instead of doing that, you want to go and say public, uh, sorry, let, let's not break things like this here, public delegate value tasks. You're basically literally saying, I'm going to take a value task for my delegate, you know, and that's where delegation uh, you know, function, whatever you want to do. And now you can go back into your component and on initialization, you're basically going and saying on initialization, I'm going to go here and say this dot base uh, dialog dot uh, delegation. Where is, what's the base component called? Yeah, it's just called dialog. 
right? And this guy that doesn't have or something like set delegation or something like that, Josh. So that will oh, be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's what he did. So so you're basically going here and saying. So he's got a bypassing the parameters then. So um, literally, literally. Yeah. So you have to do it by reference. Um, right. So he's basically going and saying sit uh, on click. And he's doing it, which to be honest with you, it's this is what I love about Brian Parker. It's cleaner because you're basically going and saying. I don't care. Let's just see how we're going to do it. Right. So this is delegation in here. Like so this delegation becomes the parameter. Okay, this is a delegation like this. And then you're basically going and saying, you know, on click. So this dialog button, look at this, this thing is doing it for me. Um, the click part would be just a moment. Yeah, Joshua. So we want this click function. We could just assign the the delegation directly. So you're basically going and saying, "Man, Brian is very smart." I have to tell you, <laughs> this is on click, right? This on click is this action, right? I can go here and say this dot on click. Assign that delegation to it. See how I took away the entire piece of code and I signed it differently this way, right? So now I can get rid of this on click, but I'm not going to get rid of it yet because it's going to blow up and cause all kinds of fires, right? So I'm just going to take it from here completely. Look, this guy's out. Now it's programmatically set up to handle that situation because in here I'm basically going and saying this dialogue that sit on click and I'm going and saying this dot uh, 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 post view async so I need to take this whole guy in here the guys in the wrong place I need to go on initialize right here like this Josh Right now, post view is sync. I changed it into void, so now it's rejecting it. But if I turn it into value task, this guy will be happy because it's this guy. See, look, look at this setup right here. Are you with me, or did you fall asleep? No, I'm here. I'm here. So now your unit test will freak out. But if I run my system right now, let's try it out and see if it actually executes. If it hits, if it hits the the the, if it hits, see, here you go. Object reference is not set. Why? Because because the dialog was not initiate instantiated yet. Because this is uninitialized. Mm -hmm. You didn't even start yet. What about the the on after initializer? What's the what's the lifecycle called? It's um the on after first one. render. Yep. Override on after. Which I don't like it, but that's we could still because after the first render, it will initialize it. Now we can set the things now it's getting it's really getting dependent on on the life cycle but um let's see there's still I'm, I'm i still think there is a way we can let's just see what it does it's nice to play around with these concepts so now i'm clicking the button right if this is actually working if i hit the button it should hit in here it works look Ooh. so now <laughs> look look how things are evolving just things like these right but I have to tell you this, evolution only happens when you finish the task and still say, I need more. I need to make it mm -hmm. better. So imagine this. Now you don't have any functions in here. Which I don't know if I like it because now it, it kind of hides it from this view. So you don't, you don't, uh, you know, you, you get less declarative on your declarative UI. Um, and you're wiring it up more. Another scenario I was trying to think through was, um, you know, we, we have the dynamic components, components. What if we wanted to render any kind of component? You'd have to be able to have a method to go wire up those those things. So instead of using a templated component and being able to loop over things and be able to figure out what, you know, and do you want an input box or do you want a radio button or whatever and stuff to be able to render, how would you dynamically render these things? Um, but I think you might be able to do it, um, especially if no, you did kind of no, a little... No. Josh, I remember now. Oh, Brian, Brian, Brian. You know what Brian did? He went like this. Check it out. 
He he took this delegate. Oh, I love this man. He's he's very smart. <laughs> look look what he did. Let me show you. He went in here and said this on click guy that you have. I remember now. Make that this guy delegation. This guy is your delegation. Okay, and I'm throwing that guy away completely. I'm not touching okay. this. Guy. Watch this. Watch this. So now I can throw away that garbage that we just created, right? And I can go into this guy here. Watch this. I can go and say at uh, post uh, post view sync. Watch, watch. Done. This is why I love Brian Parker. What? Yeah. Why don't we do all those things? Be that's the beauty of the open source community. That's the beauty of having a community at all. Now, let's just see if this actually makes all these tests pass. Because, see, that's the beauty of having unit tests. <laughs> It'll tell us when, when our assumptions and our theories are true or not. <laughs> you, you met Brian Parker, right? At least you mm -hmm. heard me talk about him at yep, least yep, yep. once. So, so see, see how clean this is? Joshua, smartest man. When it comes to Blazor, this guy, you can't talk to him about anything. He's been programming since 1965. You and I didn't even exist back then. <laughs> so now let's run it. If I run this, look how simple and, 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 and cute this is. Cute. The only thing I hate about it is that you still, yeah, see, it's working. It's hitting the endpoint. It's hitting everything. Yep. If I continue this, it should give me an error. Yep, exactly as I expected. So that's one cleany part that I can do. The only thing that I hate about this, Josh, and maybe you can, this is having multiple brains together to think about things, is that on this dialog base, we need to find a home for this de for this declaration. You don't know where this declaration is supposed to live. Does it live at the top before the parameters? Does it live at the bottom, you know, after the parameters? Where does it live? We need to find a home for it, right? Because when you go like this, it kind of hurts the cohesion of your base component. It's beautiful. It makes your life so much easier because now you don't have to think in terms of callback and event callback and delegate. You don't have to think in these terms at all anymore. Because you're working with delegates, you know how you know how a lot of people saying delegates are. No, they're not. It's right there. You need it, and it lets you do whatever you want. I need to find a home for it. That's the only thing. Like having it sitting on top like this is kind of weird. <laughs> Almost like it's not supposed to be here, right? But where is it supposed to live? I don't know. Do we put it at the very bottom? That's still gonna be weird. You know, so it's sitting these with here with all these parameters, but we don't know what to do with it. Do we set it maybe with its sisters at the bottom here next to the dialogue? Maybe. But it's kind of weird that you're using something before you've declared it. Are you in that kind of school of thought as well, or where do you stand? Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, that's uh, you want to yeah, use it. You want to define it before you, and that's what like kind of the parameters are, are kind of signifying. It's coming from the other um somewhere up above and stuff but can you scroll up real quick the so it's value mm -hmm. see the, so this is like declaring your own type kind of thing right 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 and now you're using that type that's what he did i remember now oh bless your heart brian this is this is it i just want to find a nice place for this that's all like the big problem is solved. Like going here, look at look at the code now, Josh. Look at this. Look at this. Always care about how your code looks like. That's software craftsmanship right there. You know, I just don't know, man. I don't know where. This is multi line. You could put a code block at the bottom of this thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're out of your mind. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kick you out of the session if you don't stop talking. <laughs> But, but seriously, you got to appreciate that, right? It's a lot cleaner. See how many years have you and I been doing it in this hacky, rinky-dink way? And then comes this brother all the way from Australia and say, hey, here's a better way to do it. Right? Okay. 
So okay, so I'm just gonna go here and say code rob uh, replace hacky anonymous <laughs> funks functions with delegates. Huge thanks. Amazing Brian Parker. A man. Okay, so you gotta appreciate that. You gotta appreciate that kind of mindset that makes your code still better. Here's the thing, you and I are sitting here on a Sunday night. We don't have to do that, do we? <laughs> but we do it anyway, right? Like brain teasers, you gotta, you gotta keep your, your uh, brain going. You have. I'm to. gonna think about this. I'm gonna now. This is gonna is gonna gonna hurt me. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to if keep me up at night. If you can find something where we can put this delegate, Joshua, I'm gonna be very grateful. Just as much as I'm grateful to Brian Parker this moment in time. This is his genius. This is his legacy. Oh, you already put it in there. Thank you, Josh. All the things, all the right things. So we have a dialogue, right? Now we need to connect uh, Stanislav timeline with this dialogue so we pop a dialogue click post the post goes to the api and then refresh the timeline again that's going to be our next session are you excited so excited let me see if the build is pass okay do you have any feedback for me a little retrospective about this session before we wrap no, up I I think it's it's uh, going good. Anyway, we're we're taking a little bit to to get there and kind of build up, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of pace and everything and stuff. But I think uh, it will it's, it'll be good to see how we are, you know, the next steps and how we get and we get there. Um, no, I think it's good. All right, thank you so much, Joshua. It's always fun to hang out with you. I know this is like almost an hour and a half, and for the people watching, before that hour and a half, we talked for like an hour. You know, <laughs> so I basically started talking to Josh at eight, and now it's ten eight, <laughs> which is which is like one in the morning over there, or something like that. Thank you so much, Joshua. I appreciate you. You stay safe and uh, stay blessed, brother. Thank you for for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments. For Mr. Josh McCall, please drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, Josh. Take care. Bye.